بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم When I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I was one of the people of the veranda, one of the people of the sofa. I would not go anywhere. I would not trade in the market. I would not attend to the tilth or fields or my crops. But remaining hungry and thirsty and facing privations, I would remain in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in such a way, in such a way that I would suffer hunger, extreme hunger. And such hunger that at times I would fall down in between the house of Ummul Mu'mineen Aisha and the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And people would pass by and they would place their feet on my neck thinking that I was mad. People believed, there, were, there was a belief that those who suffered from epilepsy, those who suffered from a certain form of mental illness, they would fall down unconscious on the floor all close to unconsciousness. And the Arabs believed that one method of curing them was to sit on their chest or to apply pressure with the body and feet on their necks. So people, Abu Hurairah who says, I would fall down unconscious and people would come. Some would sit on my chest to try and cure me and do something for me. Others would place their feet and apply pressure on my neck. And I would actually raise my head and say to them, I am not mad, but by Allah, this is hunger. I am not mad, this is hunger. So you say, Abu Hurairah says once, I was so hungry, that I saw Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. So I stood up to follow him. And I wanted to strike up a conversation with him, so that Abu, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu would tell me, come with me, and I would remain conversing with him until Abu Bakr as-Siddiq would arrive home and maybe he would feed me. So I stood up, I followed Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, I asked him a question about a verse of the Qur'an. But Abu Huraira, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu didn't pay me much attention. He answered him, didn't pay me much attention and walked on. I then followed Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu didn't understand either and he carried on. So I came, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by and he saw the look on my face. He knew my need and he said, Oh Abu Huraira, rise and follow me. So I went with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into his home. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked one of his wives, Do you have anything? The wife said, Ya Rasulullah, he is a bowl of milk. So the Prophet said, a bowl of milk? So the Prophet ﷺ said, where did you get that from? She said, someone sent it as a gift. So the Prophet ﷺ took the bowl, turned around and said, Abu Hurairah, go and call the people of Suffa, the companions of the veranda. Wallahi, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu says in the hadith, that I wish that the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't have told me to go and call anybody else. I desired that he would just give me the bowl of milk. But he told me to go. And he actually says, I had no choice but to obey Allah and his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is another beautiful phrase. Many of the sahaba radiallahu anhum, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would tell them to do something, including the wives, they would use the phrase, Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would never say, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, I had no choice but to obey Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I went. And I called the companions of the veranda, of the suffa, and they came. Group by group, the Prophet ﷺ, to add to his pain and hunger, he gave him the bowl of milk and said, feed them. So Abu Hurairah took the bowl of milk and went to each group of, com- of the companions and said, drink, drink. Each sahabi drank to his fill, but wallahi, the milk was the same. Finally, when all of the companions of the veranda had drunk, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu brought the bowl of milk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled at him and said, Oh Abu Huraira, there only remains the two of us. Drink. 
So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh, began drinking. He said, I drank, I drank, I drank to my fill. Then the Prophet sallallahu said to me, drink again. I drank for the second time to my fill. Then the Prophet sallallahu said, drink again for the third time. I drank again. For the fourth time, Rasulullah sallallahu said to me, drink. I said, by Allah, there is no space in my stomach to take any more. Then the Prophet sallallahu took the bowl and with one sip, the Prophet sallallahu finished the milk. Wallahi, these are hadith. But apart from the barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look at the sacrifice of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Falling down unconscious between the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the house of Umm Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha out of hunger. Long afterwards, one of the narrators says, we were seated with Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. And Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu wanted to spit. So he took out a piece of cloth, a handkerchief, cotton handkerchief. And remember, cotton was considered quite a luxurious item in those days. Smooth, unlike the coarse wool. So he took out a handkerchief of cotton and he spat into the handkerchief whilst everybody was watching. And then addressing himself, he said, Wah, O oh Abu Hurairah, Wah, look at you. O oh Abu Hurairah, you now spit into a handkerchief of cotton of smooth cloth. But do you remember the time when you would fall down unconscious out of hunger between the mimbar and the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So he suffered. He suffered immensely. But all of it was in the way of Allah, was in the way of gaining knowledge. He would fall down unconscious and people would think he was mad. He would say, there is no madness with me. This is only hunger. But he chose to remain with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.